springtime fishing. Here's your bit that I'm going to throw out the window for you. Water temp. Throw it out the window. Throw it out the window. In my opinion, the single most important thing this time of the year is length of daylight. When it start, them days start getting longer, those fish start moving. Fish is not sitting there going, my God, it's 39 degrees, it's too cold, I can't do nothing, it's going to wait to 50. When you catch a springtime fish this time of the year, is it fat? I just got through looking at the pictures. Is it fat or is it skinny? How did it do that? Did it feed that heavy in October that it got looking like that? It dang sure didn't sit there and wait around for 39 to go to 42 to go to 45 to go to 48. I bet you guys were probably fishing in mid 40 degree water for the most part. 49 degrees, 48 degrees. 48, all right. That's cold. Would one of us jump in the water at 48 degrees? If we did, I bet, I bet you by God we'd get out pretty quick too. They didn't get that big by not feeding. The biggest myth, in my opinion, after all the years I've done is, is water team. People are like, man, I gotta find 52. I gotta run in that northwest corner. Then every fish in the lake go from the south end of that lake to the northwest end. <coughs> they can't do it. They can't swim that far. If they could, they would look that thin when you finally caught the darn thing. Get rid of water temp. Now, there's an exception to every rule. If you're somewhere and you, you've got them figured out and it's 48 degrees and you've got that nice pretty sunny day that warms up to 51, chances are it will intensify what's already happening. But the number one thing I look for this time of year is the length of day. The longer that day gets, the more active they become and the longer they'll bite. No. People are going to go, water tin. No. No. Where's all the bait fish at this time of year? First third of the creeks. Main lake, first third of the creeks. Maybe halfway back. Maybe halfway back. Another thing to key in on this time of the year. Fish will move vertically before they'll move horizontally. Here's what I mean by that. Springtime when they come in and they flood the banks and we're all catching them. Spinnerbait, flipping, pitching, and it's just wonderful. Any, any, yeah, Stevie Wonder can catch one if he can just hit the water, all right? We've all seen that. We laugh, but it's a true statement. Every pocket we pull into, I don't know if anybody, any of you guys or girls have ever been to Bugs Island. You'll hit a time period at Bugs Island, I don't care where you pull in on that lake. If you flip in the bush, you can catch one. They have just then moved horizontally. But until that time period, these fish move vertical. You can see our, our electronics now are good enough, and I'm not going to pump anyone's brand, Hummingbird, Lawrence, who's ever. If it's worth a flip, you can see these fish this time of year. You can see the bait fish. If you'll take 20, 30 minutes to an hour every day, I don't So they move vertical. Their creek channels, channel swings, off points. And I, and I don't mean these long, slow, I'm talking about a drop. You'll see the bait fish, they'll show up just as pretty as you can please. And that part of the lake, that's where the bass is at. They'll move vertical. Now, jerk bait fishing is something that I've had to adapt to, but it's made me learn what I'm telling you guys now. Length of day, figure out where the bait fish is at, figure out where these fish are moving at, and remember, they'll move vertical. Jerk bait fishing. Here's how simple it is. You've seen all these fancy, many, many word articles we've written, but I'm going to tell you, it's this simple. Understand the water column, the depth at which you're using, find the bait that's going to get down that deep, and let it sit there. It's that simple. But now let's take it a step further. For bank beaters like myself, that means my boat has to be in a position where I'm a cast and a half off that bank. Because when fish suspend, they don't do it against the bank. Every good jerkbait fisherman I've ever known, there is, is people that will come off the bank. We as fishermen are so target oriented. We've got to have a lay down, we've got a piece of grass, boat dock, lily pad, we've got to have something to throw next to. But when you get to lakes like Gaston, here's where you guys and ladies are going to see this. 
this time of the year you'll go to Lake Gaston. Chances are there could be a small spinnerbait bite going on, crankbait bite, midway back in certain creeks. It's going to last for about two hours in the morning. It's going to be done. Ghost fish gone. Now, that two hours you can get well in a hurry. The rest of the fish in the lake, if I was fishing it, I would be looking toward the mid to lower end. This time of the year, answer this question. What is the most turbulent water in the whole lake? With, we, with us dealing with these early spring rains. Absolutely. Baxter Creeks and up rivers. rivers. Now one thing I don't want to fish is cold muddy water. Now that's, that's just taboo. Are the fish there? Absolutely. Are they going to feed? Absolutely not. It's just rocked their whole world. It's just, it's ruined their whole world. So where's the most stable water at in the whole lake? Mid Lake Dam. All right. So most good jerkbait fishing this time of year comes from Mid Lake Dam. And it's a matter of finding that point, finding that ditch that's going into that creek. And, and you're talking about, again, we want to be vertical. So if our boat's sitting in six and we're throwing up in two, do we have any chance to be vertical at all? No. Got a chance to throw and wind a lot that day, but we're not going to do a lot of catching this time of year. So now we're looking for main life docks. We're looking for bluff ends. We're looking for points. We're looking for channel swings. And there's a progression of baits that I like to use, and everybody, and I'm going to say Lucky Craft's done a, a better than average job of most baits out there of creating a new jerk bait. I think that's a very fair assessment without me trying to sell you guys something, okay? I think we'll all agree with that. Anybody that knows anything about fishing, say, look, they've done okay. But now I'm sitting here with six different baits. Which one? I'm going to tell you there's a tool. Every one of them's got a tool. I'm going to walk you through my little theory of them, and you've got to figure out what applies for yourself. And here's what I mean. The first bait that I'd pick up this time of the year, and again, it depends on the fish and the water column and everything, but I'm assuming they're going to be pretty deep, they moved up vertical, so I need something that's going to go as deep as it can go. And as I point to them, they took point to 100. Okay? Deepest diving one we've got in our whole family. So, <coughs> go back to what I said. They move vertical. Cast them half off the bank. I found them on the side of the points. It's going back in the spawning coves. Throw that thing out there. Wind it down four or five times. Do we jerk, jerk? Just a nice slow pull. Pull, pull, and stop. All jerk bait fishing. All jerk bait fishing. This time of year, the less you do with it, the better. When I first start and I'm in an area and I've rowed a couple hours, and I literally will ride a couple hours and figure out where's the bait fish at, where are the game fish at. You're going to see them when you depth find them. When I identify those areas, now it's about figuring out the cadence that these fish want. I'm around bait fish, I'm around gaping fish, throw the thing out there, wind it down, a cast and a half off the bank. Cast and a half. That's the hardest part because we are so visual as fishermen. <coughs> we want to throw it next to something. Wind that thing down there, four or five cranks. It's literally, to me, it's a pull, pull. I'm not saying taking up smoking, but do something. Pocket pool, whatever. <laughs> Leave it for the count of 20. Minimum. Leave it. I like fishing. This is one of the times, see I got y'all's attention on that. This is one of the times I always say fish with the weed. And it, on, on a slight breeze, and here's why. I'll make that long cast out there. I know the water column that they're using. I'm a cast and a half off. These fish are moving vertical. They will come to my bait. Bass most of the time will come up to either bank. It's a rarity this time of the year for them to go down. That's why suspending jerk baits are so good. I can get that bait down there to about 9, 10 foot of water on a really long cast on an 8 to 10 pound mono. And I'm a mono guy for jerk bait fishing. Suspended jerk baits, they're made to suspend, they're not made to sink. You put full car mono, it's going to sink like a rock.